At 15 years old, a high school student, Roman Sadovsky was already on his way to becoming a star. Seven years later, and now Roman is ready to go for gold. He's about to leave his hometown of Vaughan, Ontario for Beijing to compete for Canada in his very first Olympic Games. Roman is joining us this morning. Welcome to your morning. Great to see you. Hi, thanks for having me. I kept staring at this video going, you were just 15. You were so poised. You're so fantastic to watch. So fast forward to today, you're getting ready to make your debut appearance at the Games. What has this experience been like leading up to the Games? Tell me about your journey. Honestly, it's been just like such a whirlwind. Um, I'd say since the last games, the goal was just to really take every day as um, a really good opportunity to train to get to those games. And I feel like I did all the right things and took all the right steps to get there. And COVID hit and then we were off the ice for a while and uh, um, definitely ups and downs. But I just stayed focused and knew what I wanted. And we're going now, so super I, exciting. We're going to talk about the trip in a second, but talk to me about your training because we've interviewed so many athletes who have told us their adaptations trying to train during a pandemic. What did you do? Yeah, so we were off for like two, two or three months initially, and I was just off the ice practicing my dry land jumping, and for the most part, that's all I could really do. And then, um, thankfully, we were on, back on the ice, and um, kind of the elite skaters were still on for quite a long time. Competitions were weird. There were no audiences, but mm. we kind of adapted. And I think it's important as athletes to be resilient and be able to push through even during these weird times. Yeah, Roman, what's that going to be like for you? And maybe it'll be an advantage because this will be your first games and you won't know any different. But, you know, when I've talked to figure skaters in the past, they really feed off that energy from the crowd. And, and this time around, there's only a few spectators that are going to be allowed. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say I, I definitely prefer spectators. I like connecting with the audience. And like you said, a lot of us do thrive off of it. But I think a lot of us are kind of almost getting used to it because it's not hmm. the first time and probably not the last time that there's going to be no <laughs> audience. Uh, do you have a clear idea yet, Roman, of the rules that you're going to have to follow while you're competing? How, what's it going to be like? It's kind of changing every day, so <laughs> I don't really know. Uh, for the most part, it's going to be a completely closed loop. We might be able to move around in the village. That I don't 100% know, but it's definitely way more limited than a normal game. It's not that I would really know about it, but uh, really the focus there is just to um, really focus on my sport and really focus on competing. We talked about spectators. Um, your, your family and your friends aren't going to be able to come with you. So where are they going to watch from? How are they planning to, to watch you? <laughs> well, all my family and friends are going to watch from home. Um, because, because of all the restrictions, I'm sure they're all going to be separated. They're not going to, like, gather around. And uh, I think they're going to be really nervous. <laughs> I don't even know <laughs> if my parents would really want to come. <laughs> they're kind of, like, uh, really scared to watch now that things are getting more serious. So I think they're glad to stay home. Uh, so we spoke to Chef de Mission, Katrina Lemaidon, last week. She told us the first celebration for Team Canada will be physically landing in China and then testing negative. So I, yeah. I know producers on the TV side and athletes are all taking special measures to make sure they can actually compete. What are you doing? So, thankfully, because of the restrictions, no one really goes into our facility. Um, there's only me and a few other skaters who are allowed to skate, so our traffic is really low. Um, I'm not seeing anyone. I'm basically just going from the rink, home, and back. I'm not going anywhere else. Uh, I live with my parents, so they can do the grocery shopping. I'm basically completely isolated from the world. <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious what you are dreaming about these days and weeks heading into the Olympics. I mean, you shared this picture on Instagram you'd taken four years ago in front of the Olympic torch in Vancouver. You captioned it next time. And four years later, it is happening for you. What are you thinking about in these final days and weeks? Um, at this point, the focus is just really just to lay down the best performances that I have and really just trust the training going in. And I look at this picture of you now, and are you visualizing yourself, like, on the podium with a gold medal? <laughs> sure. <laughs> of course you are. I mean, this, of course. I mean, we're always dreaming and trying to get there. And, um, again, my focus is really just to perform to the best of my ability, and then the rest is not really entirely in my control, what other people do. So uh, definitely focusing on myself and trying to make uh, the most memorable Olympic experience. Roman, I'm so glad we got to meet you before you go. We will be cheering you on Thank you. as well. And can't wait to talk to you when you come back. Have a great games. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.